Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Behind the Find, a show that is gonna be different than a pickups video where we show you a ton of things at a super fast pace. Instead, we're gonna focus on one particular item or one particular haul that we think deserves to be shown more love and more detail. And on today's episode, we're gonna be looking at that Nintendo 64 bundle that I got recently for $100 that ended up being worth more like $700. Welcome to Behind the Find. As video game collectors, there are two things we do really well. Buy video games and show them off. But sometimes our treasures deserve to be seen in deeper detail. Today, let's get into Behind the Find. Before I begin, let me know down in the comments below if you want to see videos like this more often. These are going to be less crazy edited, more fun just sitting back and talking with you guys about video games. So, how this bundle worked, if you saw the last video in the NES Pursuit, basically a guy came into a store, he wanted to sell a bunch of stuff, I bundled a bunch of stuff together and a bunch of items and told this guy, what do you want the whole box for? And he said, what do you want for this box? $100. $100, and what I wanna make sure that you guys know is that when this deal was done, I did tell him this is worth a lot more. I even gave him a card so that he could check out the channel so that he doesn't feel swindled or like I tried to get him down to something that was unreasonably low, but he said 100 bucks and I said okay. This was not until I got home later in the day and started video game price charting all of these things one by one each item till I found out that the bundle was closer to $700 and maybe even more because because I didn't know about the pricing of some of these manuals until later, but let's begin. The first thing that was in the box is N64 controllers. There was two of these, a blue one and a red one. Both of these are in good condition, both work well, and even the analog sticks are still pretty functional, which a lot of times, as you know, if you collect Nintendo 64 controllers, a lot of times these analog sticks can suck. So controllers are always nice things to find inside of any bundle that you get. Next, there was some GameCube controllers in this bundle as well as a Wavebird with a receiver, but I ended up giving that one to Gabo the Giver. But this one is the silver one. Again, everything works well, everything's functional. The C-Stick is clicky as the way I like it as they are in GameCube controllers. And yeah, great condition, great controller, and a great addition to have inside any bundle. There were only a few games in here that weren't Nintendo 64 games, and one of them is Castlevania Curse of Darkness. This game is a rated M game by Konami, and also Wii Sports, a game that has gone on to be one of the best selling video games of all time. Yeah, it has pack-in syndrome, but it's still a good game. And the last three games that were not Nintendo 64 games that came in this bundle is Pokemon Diamond version, also Pokemon Black version, and Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time. I am not a Pokemon guy at all, so I would love to know down in the comments below what you guys think of these games. Are these good games? As a non-Pokemon fan, should I be diving into these games first, or are there other Pokemon games that you guys think I should kinda dive into before I go into these? And now on to the Nintendo 64 part of the deal. Now, one of the first games I got is a game called Sin and Punishment, which did come with the Adapter Wonder. It is a Japanese game that you need one of these four. Oddly enough, I played the game at my buddy Mort's house, and when we played it, yes, the game was in Japanese, but all the words and the verbiage and the dialogue was actually spoken in English. You can actually check it out right here. Sin and Punishment. Looks like it's working. Dude, it's in English. Uh, the voice acting's in English, everything's, in, and we're playing the N64 cart. That kind of took us by surprise, the English. Completely, I, I was not expecting that at all. It's got Japanese subtitles, but we'll have to figure it out. Didn't I tell you? Make me the bait, and Radon will come to feast. Radon is jealous of you. And yes, I did end up selling that game to Mort as well. Some of these games that I wanna make very clear, you guys, is when I bought this bundle, is some of these games will be sold, some will be used for trade, and some will be kept for my personal collection. That's just how it works when you're a collector. Sometimes you keep certain things, sometimes you trade certain items, and yes, as you guys know, many things we end up keeping, probably more than we should. But Sin and Punishment was a fantastic game on the Nintendo 64. I didn't know anything about it before 
I got the bundle, but when I went home and I was researching the game before I played it, CGR Classic Game Room, when that still was a thing, said it is one of the best Nintendo 64 games of all time. And I'm saying it's a pretty good one based off just what I played for about 15 minutes. Next is Donkey Kong 64, a game that took Donkey Kong into the 3D platforming world, but also this game is very much known for the Donkey Kong rap and for being a good platforming game. And also, this yellow cartridge always grabbed the attention of kids. As you guys know, when you were younger, if you saw any cartridge that looked different or looked weird, your eyes went to it, and that's the game you wanted to check out. Star Wars Rogue Squadron, a very beloved game by many. I myself as well loved this game, but what I loved the most was watching my brothers play it. If any of you guys have older brothers, you know what it's like to try to get your hands on a controller when they're into a game. So this, I enjoyed very much, but I think I enjoyed more watching my brothers play it. Sticking with that, this was also in the bundle, Star Wars Episode One: Battle for Naboo. This is a game I did not play. I played another Star Wars game, which I'll show you guys later that was in the bundle, but this is one I did not play, so let me know before I dive into this. Do you guys think I'll enjoy this? I'm curious. One of my favorite series of all time and something that needs to be put on the Nintendo Switch would be Pilot Wings. This is Pilot Wings 64, one of the most beautiful soundtracks out there and a game series that I myself as an action platformer kid never thought I would like a game like this, but Pilot Wings has grabbed my heart and I would love to see something like this come back down to the Nintendo Switch. Another great game to have in this bundle is Banjo-Kazooie, known as one of the best platformers out there. And yes, there is a lot of people as well who say it's one of the best games of all time and a lot of people also argue as it's the best game on the Nintendo 64. I myself will hold Super Mario 64 as the best 3D platformer on that console, but Banjo-Kazooie, a fantastic game to get in the slot. Kirby 64 and the Crystal Shards, very glad to have this in here. I do have a copy of this already, but I am a huge Kirby fan. There was a period of my life where I had a whole bunch of Kirby stickers on my car, so anytime I see Kirby hop back into a bundle, this will be used for trade. I'm happy to see it in here anyway, because Kirby just makes me smile. Twisted Edge Extreme Snowboarding, yes, a California kid myself. Surf, skate, and snow is what we know down here. So Twisted Edge was awesome. It was a fun game. I don't hold it up there with games like Snowboard Kids or even 1080, which are more of my favorites, but still, with the word extreme in there, as a kid in California, you see the word extreme and you automatically think you're cooler playing it. So a great game to get in the lot. Off-Road Challenge, a game that I watched my brother put not only just a few hours in, but this is one of the few games he like marathoned when we were younger. He played, I think, this for about 18 hours straight when we were a kid, and by the end of it, I was tired of seeing it, but seeing it now again, because I don't have it, I like seeing it again. It brings back a lot of funny memories. Army Men Air Combat. It's funny to see this one in here because when I saw it, I was like, I don't remember if I've played that game or not. And I say that because I have played a ton of Army Men games. There are just so many different iterations in the Army Men series that I can't remember if this is one I played, but I think it's one I enjoyed because I only remember not enjoying one of them out of all of them that I played, so I'm hoping it's one of the ones I liked. Toy Story 2. Now, if you used to watch our old show, Retro Liberty, Ricky and I used to have a show called Faceless Games where we would buy games without labels and then we'd go home and try them out, and Toy Story 2 happened to be one of them, so now I have one with an actual label on it. Whoa. Dude, this is pretty cool. Yeah. I gotta admit. But with that, the game is actually a very fun game. We had a better time playing this game than I was expecting. So Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue is the full title and a fun game. A sports game, NFL Quarterback Club 99. Yeah, I don't really care about sports games, but there was a period in my life where I enjoyed football for like one year. And my favorite quarterback at that time was Brett Favre. And he's on the cover here, so. I guess it's kind of cool to have. <laughs> Mischief Makers, fantastic. If you don't know Mischief Makers and you have a Nintendo 64, you are missing out. 3D, 2D, 2.5D action platformer with puzzles. This is a game you need to play. It did graphics differently and it did gameplay differently than what everybody was doing on the Nintendo 64 at the time. So Mischief Makers, a fantastic game to have in the lot. With the recent release of the Spider-Man game on the PlayStation 4, we have Spider-Man here on the Nintendo 64. And again, 
the same as Donkey Kong 64. This game grabs your attention simply by its visual appeal. I don't remember playing it too much, but I don't think I have any bad memories towards it, and that's kind of how I gauge things a lot of times. If I don't remember thinking badly about it and I knew I played it, I probably thought it was a pretty good game. So happy to have it. I actually don't have this one, so I'm glad to have the red cart in my collection. Might as well get this out of the way. All-Star Baseball 99. It's for sale. Please stay tuned, we have so much more to show you. Thank you. The sequel to one of the most loved games out there, and this is Banjo-Tooie. A fantastic game to have in the lot, which I do already have as well. I didn't know I had the game until I got home and I saw it sitting there. I was like, oh, I thought I didn't have this yet. So this one will be a trade one. Great to take to cons. It is actually decently good in value, but it's also a very fun game. So if you have not played it, it's also very much worth playing as well. Tom and Jerry Fists of Fury, a very good game that you might not know is a good game because who really wants to pick this up when you're an adult and think it might be a good game? No, you would probably skip past this game, but it's actually like a one-on-one -on -one Smash Brothers-esque type game. It's a fun game, there's good animations, the controls actually work very well as well, so Tom and Jerry Fists of Fury, a great one to have in the lot, not just to add to the collection, but to play. Yoshi's Story, beauty visually. Yoshi's Island, Yoshi's Story, a lot of Yoshi's game, Yoshi's Wooly World are always done in a beautiful style and Yoshi's Story is no exception. I do not have this game yet, so this one will sit with me. Yoshi's Story, welcome. Welcome into the collection. Tigger's Honey Hunt. I know absolutely zero about this game. I have not seen gameplay. I have not tried it. I know nothing about it in any way, shape, or form. So if you have any experience with Tigger's Honey Hunt, let me know what it's actually like down in the comments below. Where the Mario Parties Began. Mario Party on the Nintendo 64. I have loved all the Mario Party games for a very long time. I even love 8 and 9 and I love 10, which not a lot of people liked at all. But I myself will hold tried and true to the Mario Party games and this is where it all started and a great game to have in the lot, especially for the value that I got the lot for. So yeah, awesome to have. Major League Baseball featuring Ken Griffey Jr. Now I know I said I'm not a big fan of baseball games, but I actually enjoy some of the Ken Griffey Jr. video games, like the one on the Super Nintendo winning run, and this one I like decently as well. Again, it ain't no Base Wars, but it's still pretty fun. Load Runner 3D. I actually didn't know Load Runner was on the Nintendo 64. I've played other Load Runner games before, so I'm pretty excited to dive into this one. Let me know if you guys like it. I'm gonna play it. Don't know if I'm gonna keep it yet or not. I actually haven't even checked if I have one or not already, so I'll know soon. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Mario Party 3, the only other Mario Party game that happened to be in this bundle. But yes, Mario Party 3, a fantastic game. One of the more beloved ones, I would say, at least in my household, many hours spent with brothers playing this. Too many hours spent, and yes, the cliche, arguments did happen playing Mario Party 3 at my house. Great to have in the bundle. I did say there was another Star Wars game in here that I did play a lot, and that is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I might say the best Star Wars game on the Nintendo 64. I may even say one of the best Star Wars games out there. I would definitely say top five. I love this game. It is everything I wanted in a Star Wars game when I was a kid, and it made me feel like I was actually a part of a Star Wars video game. So Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, Awesome. Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. Another game I did not play yet before this and I'm scared. I'm scared that it's not gonna be a traditional Pac-Man game. I don't like some of the other Pac-Man games when they venture out into other types of style of video game. I like Pac-Man the way Pac-Man first was intended, but let me know, is this a 3D platformer? Because if it is, I'm gonna be a little hesitant in liking it. So let me know, I will still give it a try though, but I wanna know your guys' opinions before I pop it and get my hopes up too high. Duck Dodgers starring Daffy Duck, a great game to have in the lot. This is also a game that Ricky and I discovered while playing Faceless Games and doing our Faceless Games series. Well, I could have figured that one out. No, you couldn't. Look at that kick! Do that kick again. Pyong! That's Dude, a big kick. That's an awesome kick. An awesome 3D action platformer, way more fun and way underrated. In my opinion, a pretty darn great Nintendo 64 game that deserves a little more acknowledgement from the gaming community. 
We just got Mario Tennis Aces. I just recently bought Mario Tennis on the Virtual Boy, and now Mario Tennis on the Nintendo 64. Fantastic to have in the bundle. Tennis games are awesome. I've been loving tennis games ever since I was a kid, and this was no different. Something about bringing the characters that I loved, all the Nintendo IPs, into a tennis game made me smile and still does to this day. Three more Nintendo 64 games to go. Pokemon Stadium 2. Again, as a non-Pokemon guy, I have not sunk in much time into this at all. When I was a kid, I was very disinterested. But again, with cart syndrome, I love this cartridge. I love the half and half, half gold, half silver. But I do love the sparkleness and it, the sparklies draw your attention to the cartridge. Let me know if this is a good game. Definitely the best looking cartridge in the bunch is Zelda Majora's Mask. It is sparkly, it is shimmery. This is the hologram, holographic version of the cart. When I saw this in there, I was really happy. Not only does it look great, but it's a great Zelda game. It is a darker tone Zelda game, which I myself love the moon in the game is a thing of beauty in my opinion. So very thankful to have this in the lot. The last game in the lot is hailed as probably the best game of all time by a ton of people. I don't know if I could ever pick my favorite game of all time right now, but Zelda. Ocarina or Ocarina of Time, however you want to pronounce it. Like I said, this is known by many people as the greatest game in the existence of the world ever. Uh, so many lists have this game topped out beating every other game in the game history as the best game of all time. I don't, I can't put it there, but it is definitely an amazing game, a fantastic game, a game that every Nintendo fan and even non-Nintendo fan hails as a thing of beauty. So I wanna make this very clear. When I added up the totals for the NES Pursuit video and put that those lot of games were worth about $672, I added in the price of manuals at like five bucks or 10 bucks more with all the manuals included. But once I started talking to some Nintendo 64 collectors, they were like, boy, you are wrong. Some of these manuals go for 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks each, which I did not know. And when I put in the thumbnail, $2.50 each for everything, that's even an understatement. I'm not including the manuals in that. I'm just talking about the games and like the controllers. If that was just in the bundle, that means I paid about $2.50 for each one of those, not including the manuals. But let me read you guys what the manuals are, just so you know. Hey you Pikachu, Mario Party 2, Toy Story 2, Super Smash Bros, Banjo-Tooie, Mario Tennis, Banjo-Kazooie, Pokemon Stadium 2, Tom and Jerry Fists of Fury, Army Men Sarge's Heroes, a manual for the Nintendo 64, Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards, Pokemon Stadium, Mario Kart 64, Star Wars Episode 1 Battle for Naboo, Excite Bite 64, Miss Pac-Man, Twisted Edge Extreme Snowboarding, Zelda Ocarina of Time, and even a couple more manuals, ones that cost a decent amount of money, which I actually ended up trading to my buddy Mort, again, which was the Duck Dodgers manual, and also some of the Mario Party games as well. So with that, that is everything I got in this lot. I am very thankful, but what I wanna know is what bundles have you guys gotten lately? But what I also need to know even more is, do you guys wanna see any more of these? This isn't my normal type of videos. This isn't my high production NES pursuit. This isn't my crazy ramblings with Ricky and I going nuts in the pickups video. This is collector to collector talking about what we have, what we own, and what we've been getting. So let me know what you guys thought of Behind the Find and make sure and subscribe because we're putting out a ton of videos at the best we can. So thank you guys so much for watching, really. We do appreciate it more than you guys know. I'm not just saying that as a, a YouTube head. I really appreciate you guys more than any of you guys will ever know. So thank you guys so much. Hope you have a good day and thanks for watching.